Welcome to EPG Patshala. This is Dr. Gulfisha Habib from Urdu University. We are going to take up the paper Indian Writing in English and the module on History of the Origin and Evolution of Indian Fiction in English. This module has been scripted by Ananya Bhattacharchi. The origin and development of Indian writing in English consolidated during the British presence in India. Various opinions are held regarding the first writings in English. However, most critics are of the opinion that it was in the early 19th century that Indian English writing first came on the scene. The three important sources that fostered the development of the uh, Indian writing in English are one, the education reforms with the British government, the efforts of the missionaries and the interest shown by the upper class Indians themselves who fostered a new interest in Indian in English literature and English language. The Charter Act of 1813 and the 1835 English Education Act of William Bentinck uh, brought about an attempt to change and improve the conditions of the servants of the East India Company. The approval of the Charter Act by the English government made England responsible for the education of the natives. English became the medium of instruction in India and English literature was taught as a discipline in the educational institutions here with the English Education Act passed by Macaulay. The history of Indian literature in English is considered to be one and a half centuries old. The Travels of Deen Muhammad is generally considered to be the first work in English written by an Indian and it was published in the year 1793. The novel as a genre remained absent from the Indian scene up to the 1900s. The establishment of the East India Company was the most, influ most influential factor in propagating Indian English literature in India. To quote Dr. A. N. Pathak, the East India Company was formed in 1599 at a meeting participated by leading London merchants and after more than 150 years, the company held the key to the domination of Bengal and India in general. The Battle of Plassey was fought in 1757, but Lord Clive had refused the liability of Diwani or Revenue Administration and it was in 1722 that the East India Company took over its duty. And still later, precisely in 1790, the liability for administering criminal justice was also bestowed upon the company. The company was, however, interested in political authority and supremacy only to the degree that such supremacy would manifold and multiply its own dividends. During 1835 to 1855, English became increasingly popular across India a number of people started showing interest in the English language and in uh, English as a discipline. Various Indians developed the habit of reading English books. In fact, the habit of reading English books was more common among the Indians and more widespread among the Indians than among the Britishers in India. The introduction of railways in 1853 and in the next year, that is in 1854, the first telegraph line being laid helped extensively in the propagation of writing in English. We have uh, people coming closer together because now distance has been reduced and communication had improved over a period of time. Moreover, various European advancements also came to be used in India. Along with the mechanical advancement, we also find a new renaissance that was seeping into the Indian soil, basically with the efforts of a prominent leader like Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Raja Ram Mohan Roy act as a link between England and India. Raja Ram Mohan Roy started the Atmiva Sabha and put in all efforts to instill a new spirit into the minds and hearts of the people. This period brought about a new, in a new renaissance in various fields such as the fields of philosophy, literature, arts, etc. Two prominent features of the renaissance in Calcutta are the formation of associations, societies and organizations and the emergence of innumerable newspapers and magazines. Another important aspect of the Bengal Renaissance was the formation of reform movements, both religious and sociocultural. We also find how Western ideals began to influence this Renaissance movement in the Bengal society. English education influenced the Indian lifestyle we find the Indian social, cultural, religious lives being transformed 
and people being influenced by the readings of English literature. This awakening, also referred to as Renaissance by many, brought about a new taste in literature among the Indians. Indian literatures themselves underwent a lot of change under the influence of the literature from the West, especially the uh, literature by the British. The introduction of prose style and its further development in literature influenced Indian writers to adopt more creative forms of writing such as poetry, novel, drama and the short story. Great works have been produced in Indian English literature in poetry, in prose, in novel and drama. It was novel that was best suited to bring forth the relationship between uh, life, the society and the human beings. However, as we already told you, novel as a genre remained absent from the Indian soil until the 1900s. When the novel first arrived on the Indian soil along with the Britishers, it was as new to the Indians as the Britishers themselves. Indian English fiction is believed to have emerged uh, around the early 20th century. Although there were many Indian exponents of fiction, it was the British elite who first uh, initiated this on the Indian soil. We have writers like Rudyard Kipling, George Orwell and Jim Corbett who gave a push to Indian writing in English and influenced the Indian writers. Let us now look at the writers of the pre-independence period. The major contribution of Indian English literature during the pre-independence period came from the Bengal writers, famous writers like Bankim Chandra Chatterjee, R. C. Dutt and Ramana Tagore. The popular novels by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee are Kopal Konda, Durgesh Nandini, Krishna Kanta's Will, The Two Rings and Raj Mohan's Wife. Most of his novels are based on the themes of social realism. His historical novels based on patriotism and revolution have provided a great impetus to other Indian English writers. R.C. Dutt wrote six novels in Bengali. Four of his historical novels are Conqueror of Bengal, Bracelet of Flowers, Evening of Rajput Life, Dawn of Maharashtra. Dutt also wrote two social novels, Samaj and Sangsar. The first one deals with the issue of widow remarriage and the second one deals with the issue of intercaste marriage. Rabindranath Tagore is the most prolific writer in Indian writing in English. His uh, collection of poems, Gitanjali, won him the Nobel Prize in 1913. Tagore wrote eight novels and some novellas. Some of his famous novels that have been translated into English are The Wreck, Gora, Home and the World. Most of the works of Tagore have been adapted into films. Let us now move on to look at the uh, Indian writing in English during the independence period. The India's struggle for freedom, the Gandhian era, both influenced Indian writing. Writers like Jagendar Singh and his work Nasreen, The Love of Kusuma by Bal Krishna, Surabji Cornelia's Love and Life Behind the Parda and Sun Babies, and Between the Twilight are some of the famous novels based around the theme of India's freedom struggle and the political situation prevalent in India during those times. The various momentous events of this period like the boycott of the Simon Commission, the Jallianwala Bagh incident, the Salt Satyagraha, the Dandi March, the Civil Disobedience Movement, the Non-Cooperation Movement, etc. influenced writings in English in India. Most of the writers uh, writing during the uh, uh, independence period were influenced by India's freedom struggle and the ideals of Gandhi and his fight against uh, untouchability, against oppression and against uh, and for the upliftment of the downtrodden. Some of the more memorable works dealing with the theme of India's freedom struggle are Mulkraj Anand's Untouchable, Raja Rao's Kantapura, K. S. Venkta Ramanis Kandan, The Patriot, K. A. Abbas's Inqalab, R. K. Narayan's Waiting for the Mahatma, Nayantra Segal's A Time to be Happy and K. Nangarajan's Chronicles of Kedaram. We now move to the post-independence period and take a quick look at the famous writers of this time. We have writers like Bhavani Bhattacharya, Kushwan Singh, Manohar Malgaonkar, Chaman Nehal, Amitav Ghosh and Salman Rishdi. Most of the writers of this period dealt with the brutality of the issues of colonization during the post-independence period. Most of these novelists 
also highlighted the nature of the modern world and the crisis of identity in their works. We also need to look at the contribution of the women writers to Indian uh, writing in English. Some of the famous women novelists in India are Raj Lakshmi Devi, Cornelia Sorabji, Iqbal Unisa Hussain. The later novelists uh, who also contributed a lot to fiction and became extremely popular are Ruth Jhabwala, Kamala Markandeya, Nayantara Sahagal, Anita Desai, Shishi Deshpande, Arundhati Roy, Shobade, Kiran Desai and others. If you look at the contemporary novelists, we have novelists like uh, Chetan Bhagat, Jhumpa Lahiri, Dominic Lapierre, Pankaj Mishra, William Damrimple among others who have gained a lot of international acclaim. The evolution of disciplines in critical studies such as feminist, diasporic, postmodern, postcolonial, Dalit literature have given a new outlook and perspective to the study of Indian writing in English. Mulkraj Anand is one of the most prolific writers in Indian uh, fiction. Like Rabindranath Tagore, he contributed extensively to Indian English literature. His first novel, The Untouchable, was published in the year 1935 and it brings forth uh, Mulkraj Anand as a humanist and also presents his concerns for the oppressed and the downtrodden sections of society. Some of his humanistic novels are Cooley, Two Leaves and a Bud, The Village, Across the Black Waters, The Sword and the Sickle, and The Big Heart. R. K. Narayan is considered as one of the pioneers of the regional novel uh, in India. His novels are set around an imaginary locale, Malgudi. Uh, some of his autobiographical novels are Swami and Friends, uh, The Bachelor of Arts and The English Teacher. The novels set on the locale of Malgudi are The Dark Room, The Financial Expert, The Guide, Waiting for Mahatma, among others. Raja Rao was the most famous novelist of the Gandhian era and his works reflect the uh, acute consciousness of the forces that came into existence around the Gandhian movement and struggle for freedom. His works include Kantapura, The Cow of the Barricades, The Serpent and the Rope, The Cat and Shakespeare, Comrade Kirilov and The Policeman and the Rose. Raja Rao was greatly influenced by Gandhi's philosophy and this is extremely evident in two of his novels, Kantapura and The Cow of the Barricades. Uh, Raja Rao, uh, if you remember, also won the Sahitya Academy for his novel The Serpent in the Rope. He has also been honored with the Padma Bhushan. One of the most important post-independent novelists in India is Bhavani Bhattacharji, who contributed a number of novels and each of his novels uh, is driven by a social purpose. Some of his novels are So Many Hungers, Music for Mohini, He Who Rides a Tiger, A Goddess Named Gold, Shadow from Ladakh and A Dream in Hawaii. He wrote a number of short stories of psychological interest. Like some of the other Indian writers, he has also been awarded the Sahitya Academy Award and this award was conferred to him for his novel Shadow from Ladakh. Yet another renowned post-independent uh, novelist is Kushwan Singh. Kushwan Singh uh, was honored with the Padma Bhushan in the year 1974. He wrote four novels, Train to Pakistan, I Shall Not Hear the Nightingale, Delhi and The Company of Women. Manohar Malgonkar is another notable writer. He served the Indian Army during the World War II and most of his uh, war experiences are recorded in his debut novel, Distant Drums. His novels have a wide range of thematic variety. Some of his novels are Combat of Shadows, The Princess, A Bend in the Ganges, Spy in Amber, The Devil's Wind and Shalimar. Chaman Nehal is another prominent writer of the post-independence period. His skill as a gifted uh, craftsman is seen in The English Queen. His uh, works are My True Faces that deals with the theme of broken marriage, Into Another Dawn that highlights the encounter between East and West, Azadi that depicts the partition of India, and The Age of Gandhi is shown in The Crown and the Loincloth. During the 1970s, a new elite class of Indian writers emerged on the screen who became globally acclaimed. One such writer is Salman Rushdie 
who not only won international acclaim but has also become the most controversial Indian writer in English. He is famous for creating magic realism in the course of depicting historical fantasy. His Midnight's Children is an extravagant representation of the mingling of an individual's life and a nation's history. He received the Booker of Bookers for this novel, which deals with the important political happenings of India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Shame, published in 1983, highlights the creation of Pakistan after 1947 and exposes the attempts towards dictatorship with the help of caricature. His novel, Satanic Verses, published in 1988, is regarded as a controversial text as it heard the sentiments of the followers of Islam. It has been banned in many countries, including India. Amitav Ghosh worked as a print journalist with the Indian Express and he had first-hand experience of the socio-political conditions of his time. His first work is titled The Circle of Reason and it depicts an individual who is suspected and as a terrorist and flees from an unknown village in Calcutta to Bombay, now Mumbai, and then journeys around the Persian Gulf to North Africa. The Shadow Lines, which won him the Sahitya Academy Award, deals with two families that live in Kolkata and Dhaka and also depicts uh, their connection with the British family in London. Kamla Markandeya was a prolific writer who dealt with social and political concerns. Her works include Nectar in a Sieve, A Silence of Desire, A Handful of Rice, The Coffer Dams, Two Virgins and The Golden Honey. Ruth Jhabwala is a unique writer of Indian English novels. She depicts her characters, their follies and their foibles in the most humorous manner. Her works are To Whom She Will, The Nature of Passion, Esmond in India, The Householder, Get Ready for Battle, A Backward Place, A New Dominion, Heat and Dust, My Nine Lives, Chapters on a Possible Past. Nayantara Saigal is one of the most remarkable writers of her times. She brings about the influence of the political situation on the lives of her characters. She also highlights the, the degeneration of human values and the rampant corruption uh, of political upheaval in her novel, A Time to be Happy. She has also authored The Time of Morning, Storm in Chandigarh, A Day in Shadow, A New Situation in New Delhi, and rich like us. Anita Desai is famous for her depiction of characters through a psychological understanding. She probes deep into the psychology of her characters, trauma of the past, mental anguish, struggle with one's own self are some of the aspects that one finds in her novels. She has written Cry the Peacock, Voices in the City, Bye Bye Blackbird, Where Shall We Go This Summer? Fire on the Mountain, Clear Light of Day, The Village by the Sea, and The Zigzag Way. Shashi Deshpande is one of the most celebrated Indian English women writers. Her novel, The Dark Holds No Terror, depicts the struggle of a woman, Sarita, who rebels against familial authority. Her other novel, Roots and Shadows, received the Thirumati Rangamal Award. That long silence deals with the search for identity, and it won her the Sahitya Academy Award. Her other novels include The Binding Vine, The Match of Time, Small Remedies and Moving On. Arundhati Roy is famous for her novel The God of Small Things. It has received extensively good reviews in major publications such as the New York Times, Los Angeles Times and Toronto Star. Shobadi mostly deals with the theme of marginalization of women and voices the idea of women empowerment through her novels. She shows her concern uh, toward women who struggle to renounce patriarchal hegemony, domestic life, marital relationships to forge an identi identity for themselves. She is the author of Socialite Evenings, Starry Nights, Sisters, Strange Obsession, Sultry Boys and Snapshots. Now that you have listened to this module and Hoping that you've already read about uh, the origin and the history of Indian writing in English. Here are a few quick questions for you. These questions will help you to revise. Let's look at these questions. 
To quickly recapitulate our module today, we have looked at the origin of Indian writing in English. We have seen how some factors greatly affected uh, Indian writing in English. These were one basically the introduction of English as the medium of instruction, medium of instruction in, in India, the work of the missionaries and the interest shown by the upper class Indians themselves. We, we have also seen how until the 1900s the novel as a genre was almost uh, absent on the Indian soil. We have seen how uh, it was the land of Bengal that first pioneered Indian writing in English. We have seen how uh, the pioneers like uh, Bankim Chandra Chatterjee, R. C. Dath and Rabindranath Tagore laid the seeds for Indian writing in English. We have seen how one of the uh, great Indian writers, Rabindranath Tagore, was awarded the Nobel Prize. We have also looked at the number of Indian writers, especially the fiction writers, who have been awarded the Sahitya Academy Award or have been honored with, with the Padma Bhushan. We have looked at writers who were writing during the pre-independence period, who wrote during the uh, independence period and who were still active during the post-independence period. We have also looked at the contemporary writers, apart from looking at the women writing in India in English. This quick survey of uh, the history and the beginnings of Indian writing in English is aimed at helping you understand the modules that follow in the paper Indian writing in English. Uh, we have uh, a suggested uh, reading list for you. Take a quick look at the list and try to read as many from these as possible. I hope you have understood the module and the doubts that you had in this module have been clarified. Thank you.